it's Katie here from the Scrappy Sisters and I am doing a face-to-face -face video which I don't do very often but I am participating in the set plan and crush Scrappy Goals 2020 edition. I'm a bit late to the party the majority of girls have already completed this I guess it's a tag uh, video and they'll all be linked down below but they uploaded it a couple of days ago now or at least a day ago um, and so I just thought I'd jump on board and play along too. Um, my friends Miranda and Amy kind of started the, the tag and brought everybody together. And so yeah, they've got 10 questions. Uh, five of them kind of look back at 2019 and then five of them look forward into 2020. So I just thought it was fun and be nice to participate. I've prepared a few things in the hope that this video won't be particularly long. Um, I'll explain my situation here behind me as part of my questions, answers to some of my questions. So excuse me for looking down, I've got the questions written down here and some of my answers and yeah, we'll kick it off. As I said, there's 10 questions. The questions will be down below. If you wanna participate, definitely make a video. It's not too late, you can do it at any point. I have my cup of tea here and I'll be drinking and talking, but yeah, I am a bit of a talker, so hopefully it doesn't go for too long. And hopefully I don't slurp my tea. There's nothing worse, is there? So. Question one, what was my favorite item in 2019? So I assume they mean favorite scrappy item in 2019. Uh, and for me, it was my silhouette, which is just there. Under this cover here is my silhouette. I got that in July for my birthday. My birthday was at the end of June and my family kind of all chipped in and I got that. You'll all know that Jess and I are on the design team for Confessions of a Paper Addict and I just had started to get really into cut files and I thought I want a silhouette. So I asked one for my birthday and I've used it heaps <laughs> obviously since then. Um, and so the second question is basically for me personally is going to be the same. So the second question is what new item did you use in 2019 and did you like it? So for me, I mean the silhouette is not a new item. It's been out for a very many many years, but it's a new item to me I only got it halfway through the year and so I am counting that as this answer I got my silhouette and did I like it? Yes. Yes, I did very much uh, Question three is what was your least favorite item I used in 2019? So I had to think about this a lot because I'm kind of one of those people if I don't like something I don't use it and I give it to somebody else who does like it. Um, now I thought long and hard about this and there's probably one exception and it's come to light I guess in the last 12 months that I don't really love washi tape of all things. So I have watched a few of these scrappy tags so far and I watched Danny's and she said washi tape as well and that got me thinking I don't like washi tape either. I love the pattern and I love the concept and the idea of washi tape but I just don't use it that much. It doesn't stick very well. Um, I just, I've, I don't find a lot of uses for it. Probably the most I use it in is Project Life because obviously it's flat and I like to keep my Project Life very flat. I don't put a lot of dimension in my Project Life. I keep my dimension to my 12 by 12 layouts. But yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking, washi tape. And actually, uh, I'll come to it later, but I'm purging my washi tape. That's my plan. Because uh, I've got... I mean, not a huge amount compared to a lot of people, but I have a lot and I just, there's no way I'm ever gonna use it all. So I'm gonna get rid of the stuff I don't love and I'm gonna keep the things that I actually do like and will probably use. Um, so my favorite layout that I made in 2019. So funnily enough, I just created a video about this. So I have a top 10 layouts of 2019 and I'll link it down below if I remember, but I think it's the video before this one that goes up. So definitely go and check that out. But I thought I would show you three because as if I can pick one three of my favorite layouts um, and yeah just to give you a teaser into what my top 10 were if you haven't watched it so if I can fit it in frame <laughs> can't really see because my hands in the way so this was one of them and sorry obviously the titles are the wrong way around because I'm filming this on my phone and I'm using the Ford camera so everything's gonna be a mirror image um, but there's that layout there and that was using a Rosie Studio collection which I loved Briarwood, I think it was called. I love this layout. It was actually for the telephone hop, uh, the first telephone hop, I think. Um, there have been three rounds so far, and this was the first round. And it's also using Coco Vanilla Studio. 
and then this layout which was for the third round of the telephone hop which I also really love and this was using Paige Evans Horizon so they were three layouts that I loved um, if you want to see the other ten go check out my video and as if I can pick one there's just too many can't pick one and what's my favorite collection or designer from 2019 and for me my favorite designer is hands down Coco Vanilla Studio I love the majority of what they put out I have a lot of Coco Vanilla Studio again also they're an Australian brand and they're fabulous so I'm going to support local because we don't have a lot of Australian specifically Australian companies there are a few who do other bits and pieces like embellishments like wood veneer and um, there's a lady who makes charms well they're embellishments made out of fabric and they're super cute called charms creations and yeah there's a few of those types of things but actual full paper or scrapbooking collections Coco Vanilla Studio I think is our only one in Australia maybe I'm wrong I don't know but yeah love them now Looking forward into 2020, the first question, question number six, or the first question of the looking forward in 2020 questions, is what's one scrappy goal for 2020? And this links into <laughs> these empty shelves over here. So I'm currently moving out of this room that we're sitting in now to film. So there's a lot of things happening. I'm filming a little bit of this process, but it won't come up on my channel for quite a while, probably not for, a month or two before I get moved but basically we're doing a big shuffle in my house so currently the master bedroom is upstairs and Link sleeps in a bedroom opposite the master bedroom so we've got kind of two rooms upstairs the master bedroom on one side and then on the other side there was one massive room when we moved in we actually put a wall up and created two smaller rooms but currently Link is kind of in both of those rooms so his nursery is in one and then there's like a, a feeding chair and stuff in the other where I feed him overnight because he's still waking He's almost one and he's still waking overnight. Anyway, I'm not bitter about that at all. <laughs> so basically he's moving downstairs and he will have the largest room downstairs as his and that will be his kind of for as long as he lives in this house room, as long as we live in this house. And then basically we're creating, I guess, what you call a parent retreat upstairs. So my partner's office and my office are both going upstairs or my scrappy room. And so... There's a lot of things that have to fall into place to make this happen. The first of which is there are only two rooms in our house with carpet. One is this room and then one is the room that Link is going into as his bedroom. And both those rooms, we've decided to steam clean that carpet before kind of we, the dust settles and we move everybody. But that means everything has to come out. <laughs> so, and I can't move it upstairs because Link's room is still there. So... It, basically I'm emptying my scrap room into our dining room which is sort of through that door next door and it's just gonna sit there for a while <laughs> until we can pretty much bring link downstairs and then move everything upstairs and then sort of reorganize so basically what I'm doing is everything's coming out so I can't lift these Calax units obviously full so I have to move everything out um, I'm also having a chance to go through everything and purge what I don't use and reorganize, create different storage systems that hopefully might work a bit better for me. And so that, answering the, the initial question of what is my scrappy goal, that is my scrappy goal for this year. I'm moving rooms, I'm purging what I don't use, I'm not throwing it out, I'll be either, my sister and my mum will look through it and see what they wanna take, I might give some things away to friends, maybe I'll do some, some racks out to people. Um, but ultimately I also have a work colleague whose partner works um, at a special needs school and she does a lot of craft with them so sometimes I will send off the things that I don't need to that special needs school for them to use so for me I'm like it's a win-win I'm getting rid of things that I don't need anymore and won't use and it will be going to people who will value it and be able to create lovely things with it so that is kind of what's gonna happen with my stash and so okay so that's question six what is one of my goals Question seven is what item would I like to use more of in 2020? And I guess the broad answer to that is mixed media. More specifically, I have um, three types of mixed media that were new to me in 2019 um, and two of them I have never used. <laughs> so um, I've just, I've got five, one's not even open. <laughs> Um, Distress Oxides by uh, Tim Holtz and so I've got I've only got 
uh, scattered straw, worn lipstick, mermaid lagoon, seedless preserve, and then brushed corduroy. This this was actually a freebie from scrapbook.com when they were doing their free random, you got a random distress oxide when you placed an order. So that was that. So I, I have used my distress oxides, not the not the wrapped one obviously but I've used the others I'm not like I don't really know what I'm doing I think I need to watch a few more YouTube tutorials so if you know anyone who's really good with distress oxides that I could go and watch let me know because I need some tips and then the other things that I got that I haven't really used are the Vicky Booten uh, this is the Ro rose gold glaze and this is the iridescent glaze now I have used I haven't used the rose gold one I don't think no, it's unopened. So I have not used this. Um, and I have used the iridescent glaze. And that was fun. I mean, you won't be able to see it. It's um, white paste. <laughs> so, but it's got this great sparkle to it, as the name suggests. It's iridescent. Um, and I just used it through a stencil on one of my layouts. I actually think I used it on this one. No, I might have just used normal texture paste on this. But I've used some mixed media on this. Anyway, I don't do a lot of mixed media. So I've got those. And then the other thing, which leads me into question number eight, is this Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. So I've got, uh, what colour is this? Powder Blue and Pacific Teal. If I turn them around that way, you'll be able to see colors so I've got those never used either of these unopened not used them don't even really know what I'm doing with them so that's my what I'd like to do. I'd like to do more mixed media but then the question number eight is what new product or technique would you like to try in 2010 and for me it's new embellishment mousse so while these products are new to me I have used different texture paints and kind of glazes in the past so I sort of knew a bit more about what I was doing with these but the embellishment mousse is this like weird I have opened this one it's like this weird texture it's hard right it's hard it's spongy and you don't get a lot of color it's probably not gonna focus you don't get a lot of color come off like just when you put your finger on it so obviously there's a way that you should be using this I should have got a baby wipe very attractive look there um and i don't know i haven't used it i believe you have to wet the product first or wet whatever you're using um you apply with a spatula or you can apply with a soft cloth and it's water-based so you add water to soften the consistency of the mousse anyway not used it really want to play with that so that is what i want to try in 2020 if you know anyone again channels that use the Nouveau embellishment mousse let me know tell me down below in the comments I want to go check them out now question nine is how many layouts would you like to set for yourself for 2020 I don't I've never set like a, a layout goal I'm not someone I know myself I'm never gonna be able to scrap like 365 layouts in a year it, it's just not gonna happen particularly this year in 2020 so as you know I had my son in 2019 in January he's almost one so I have been off on maternity leave all year. Now, I was a bit naive before I had my baby and thought, oh, I'll do heaps of scrapping while I'm on maternity leave. I mean, I did scrap, but I didn't do as much as I probably thought that I would or could. Um, but I'm going back to work four days a week as of February. So I feel like I'm just not gonna get into my craft room as much as I would like in 2020. And that's fine. You know, life happens. I have to do life stuff as well. Um, so I'm not going to set a layout goal, but what I would like to do is set a bit of a product goal, I guess. Um, so I want to finish my December daily 2019. I don't work a year behind as some people do. Um, so I have printed all of my photos. They're all in pocket, the pocket pages or whatever I'm doing within the album. I just then need to sit down and I've actually even done my journaling. I wrote, um, I kept like a diary each of the days in December. So it's kind of the bones of it are there. I just need to put it together. And I've also got, I'd show you, it normally lives on the shelf just there, but obviously it's not in the room anymore. I have decided to do a, like a milestone album for Link. So I haven't done his own scrapbook album this year. What I have done, and I'm behind on these two and this should probably be one of my projects, is I did a digital Project Life album for him for his first year. I think I'm only up to like 
his week 19 or something of his life so you know I'm quite behind um, but because I scrapped my family album and that's relatively up to date I think I'm up to October um, kind of it's all there I just need to pull out the relevant parts that are specifically about him and put it in so I just kept his kind of first year album just all about him uh, and I am going to print that into a photo book and sort of have that for him to be able to take with him now I'm probably not going to keep that up I'm only going to do it for his first 12 months and then I'll just do a family album I'm toying with an idea for 2020 I haven't decided yet I am thinking about doing our family album in Project Life digital so I know controversial <laughs> um, but hear me out I don't love doing Project Life from a creative process I like doing it to record the memories and the stories, but from a creative process and for me as a creative outlet, I much prefer 12 by 12 or nine by 12 or that sort of bigger canvas scrapping with like one photo and, you know, kind of creating an art piece, I guess. For me personally, that's the creative process and the art and the kind of that's what I get joy from. I like Project Life as a memory keeping tool and to record those stories and I do like looking back through it, but I guess to satisfy my need creativi for, for creativity, I will always go for 12 by 12 scrapping. So I'm thinking that I might do our Project Life component of our family albums or my albums for 2020 in a digital form. And then I will still though scrap 12 by 12 for 2020. So currently I mix 12 by 12 and Project Life together, but I'm thinking that I might take my Project Life put it digitally and then just do 12 by 12 and then I can scrap whatever photos I want. I can tell whatever stories I want in the 12 by 12 format and it'll still kind of sit alongside our Project Life album. It's just that that would be digital. I'm running out of space to store albums and albums are expensive in Australia and I just, I don't know if I can justify it. I have four albums for 2019 and I just, I can't do that again. I don't have the space for it um, and I just, yeah. I, I just think that I might try digital. So look, I might give it a go for a year and see what happens. Um, so I guess I don't want to do layouts, but they're sort of my goals. I guess it comes back to scrappy goals. Now, the last question, and I said I didn't want to talk for very long. It's already been 17 and a half minutes. Um, what is one YouTube goal for 2020? So my sister and I were actually talking about this just yesterday. And we would really like to reach 3,000 subscribers this year. I think it's totally doable. I think we're basically on 2,800. So I think we'll get to 3,000 this year. And that would be, um, yeah, just a huge milestone for us. I mean, we never once thought when we started this channel that we would have 3,000 people watching us. Now, obviously not 3,000 people are watching us, but subscribe to us and you know, the majority of you who interact with us are enjoying our content and yeah, it's such a great community to be a part of. So we would really be excited to reach 3000. So that's our YouTube goal for this year. And with that, that's the 10 questions. We're done. So that is the, now I have to read this, the set, plan and crush scrappy goals for 2020. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're still here in 18 and a half minutes, um, thank you for watching. Um, please check everybody else's down below. There's like, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 girls who have done this tag. So they will all be linked down below and their videos will be linked down below too. So you can go through and watch everyone's because I just think it's really fun to see people in front of the camera. You sort of see their hands while they're creating but and you hear their voices, but you don't always get to see their faces. Certainly, I suppose you're doing photos that they scrap, but you know. This is very different. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed our face-to-face. -face. Um, I don't know if Jess is gonna make this tag video. Ordinarily she would. We would make it either together or she would do it and I would do it. She's really sick at the moment. Um, she thinks she has tonsillitis, but she's really sick. So she's kind of resting and she can't really talk. Um, and it's school holidays, so her boys are home and her husband's home. <laughs> and so I don't think she'll get a chance to make this video, but that's okay. You've heard my answers. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're so excited to have you join us in 2020. We hope you had a great Christmas and New Year and we're looking so looking forward to this year. All right, guys, we will see you in the next video. Bye.